Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. Hi Beck John. Hi everyone. Hi Kyber. I'm doing great. Thank you very much. Yes, Kyber, I do believe that punctuality being being on time is an important part of success. So definitely follow that example students um all right today uh task to finish so we are going to complete the task to essay that we started yesterday about communication and i will explain how to build a strong uh, body paragraph one and two and conclusion as usual uh, this lesson is coming from and presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS, check us out there. And for the general version of the exam, please visit us at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. Uh, That's generalieltshelp.com. On both of those websites, we have loads and loads of materials for you. Uh, this is the academic one here with the blue background. Click that big red button to join our premium package. Get access to six original practice exams over 100 hours of HD video lessons and a fully interactive course as well as an app for your phone or tablet. Uh, the general IELTS looks like this, gieltshelp.com, green background, click that big red button. All right, hi Mohit, hi Hina, hi Abhishek, good to see more of our students uh, joining in. Again, uh, download and link your apps, Academic IELTS Help app, links to ahelp.com. General IELTS Help app links to gieltshelp.com. And of course, if you have questions, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, so Kyber's asking uh, if I disagree in paragraph one, should I speak about spoken communication? Uh, yeah, if you disagree, absolutely. But this is not an agree or disagree, students. This is to what extent do you agree? So I'm going to go into that detail a bit more, Kyber, as we get into the class, okay? When the question is to what extent do you agree or disagree, just pay attention to the elements of the question and structure the information accordingly. I'll tell you more about that as we go along. Okay, hi for Dobbs. nice to see you in class. I think you missed a few um, these past few weeks, but it's nice to see you. Okay, students, so uh, again, task two today, a little bit inverse, uh, followed by a task one line graph that will be for an all chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch this class. If you want to become a member, click the join button beside the subscribe button. Uh, you're welcome to watch the class. And in the next class in 90 minutes, everybody can uh, join the chat. Okay, and then tomorrow we'll have a Q&A session, members. So get those questions ready for tomorrow's class. It'll be first come, first serve. Uh, so we'll do that Q&A uh, session and then followed by a speaking part three that will be for everyone, of course, to cap off the week. All right, everyone, let's get into this. So here is the question. We'll just quickly review it for those students who weren't here yesterday and our viewers, and then we'll get into our introductory paragraph. So uh, read the question with me carefully. Uh, IELTS task two writing, you should spend about 40 minutes on this task. Spoken communication is always more powerful than written communication. To what extent do you agree? Give explanations and examples to support your opinion. Now, yesterday there was a mistake that many students were making and I really emphasized an important point in this question. Uh, members, uh, what was that important point? Please remind me. I want to make sure that you're going to remember this for future essays that have this kind of question for the IELTS or for college as well. So what was the really important point that I emphasized about this question to pay attention to? Okay. Abhishek says always, Kyber says always, um, and you're right. Um, this kind of word uh, in language and in logic, like always, never, best, 
fastest, biggest. What do we call those? Okay, what do we call these words in uh, communication? It's very important. It's an important part for those of you thinking about professional and personal communication because this is a big difference. And if you study psychology, you'll study this. That's right, students. Very good, Abhishek. Very good, Sammy. It's, they're called superlatives, okay? And if you study psychology, uh, they will tell you that psychologists really are careful about superlatives because often when people fight and when people argue with each other, they fight because they're not using superlatives correctly. And maybe some of you can relate. Um, for example, girlfriend says to boyfriend, you never call me on the weekend. You never speak to me. The boyfriend says, well, I sometimes do like once every weekend. So never is not fair. You have to be careful because never and always, right? Like you always take the best bite of food. You always have the best seat in the car. Well, it's not quite true. Um, so try to talk about the rarely. Try to talk about the sometimes more carefully. And you'll notice that you'll have better communication among your family, friends, loved ones, colleagues, and so on. Avoid superlatives. Avoid superlatives. They're very dangerous words in our vocabulary. Okay, so when you see a superlative in a task two question, it's usually a good idea to think, well, it's probably not true. Okay, it's probably not true. All right, um, so that little psychology lesson aside, let's get into our introductory paragraph. Uh, students, uh, give me your hook. Let's see what you did for your introduction. I have mine below. I don't quite want to show you yet. So a good introduction should have a hook should have a background, should have a thesis. Doesn't have to be long. Sometimes students say, oh, Adrian, your introductions are so long. Doesn't have to be. You can have a short hook, short background, short thesis, but you still need those elements. Okay, uh, so Beck John says, communication is an integral part of human life. Very nice, uh, Beck John, I like it. Okay, I'm gonna try to avoid showing you my intro. So Beck John is saying communication, he's taking the topic, integral, okay? Integral is a nice word, students. It means it is an um, important and connected part of, okay? That's integral. It's very nice, Beck John, nice vocabulary, nice hook. Abhishek says communication is the key element to express thoughts and ideas. Wonderful. Beautiful, okay? Abhishek, you don't need to repeat and ideas because you know that ideas and thoughts are the same. So just one, okay? Communication is the key element to express thoughts, period. Okay, avoid that redundancy and really nice writing. You want to avoid that repetition of the same idea with a synonym like thoughts and ideas, okay? All right, Rajveer says, uh, communication has different forms. Brilliant. I like it, Rajveer. I think that works as well. Sammy says, communication is the best way of expressing ideas. Good. Kyber says, communication is part of human life in order to convey ideas. Nice. Convey is a nice word as well. It's a nice verb. Um, convey uh, means uh, the phrasal verb is get across. Okay. Uh, meaning to transmit information. Very nice. Okay. Uh, Hina says communication is crucial among people, not the people, Hina, just people. Okay. Hassan says millions of politicians and influencers shake the world with their powerful speeches and written books. I like it, Hassan. I think that you're still on the right topic. You still have communication in there, but instead of saying communication, you're using um, a uh, descriptive definition, which is okay. It's kind of like the background, but again, if you don't want to spend too much time on your introduction, you can kind of combine the hook and the background in some cases as well. So just make sure that you have clarity, okay? 
Uh, Mohit says, communication plays a vital role to express thoughts. Sure. Mahesh says, hello, sir. Hi, Mahesh. <laughs> Good to have you in the class. All right. Lisa says, what is the question or the topic? Thank you. Um, Lisa, the question is always in the video description at the top. I always include it there. Um, and the question here, Lisa, will I'll show it to you one more time and then we'll go on to my hook is uh, spoken communication is always more powerful than written communication. To what extent do you agree? Okay. All right. So here is my uh, hook and background. Okay. So let's go over this and then we'll get into the body paragraphs. I really want to do the body paragraphs with you today and um, the uh, conclusion. So we'll move along uh, nice and smooth here. So the introduction hook communication is the method of affecting change in the world. Let me make a correction there. There. Um, so that's my hook. Communication is the method of affecting change in the world. Uh, where did I get my hook from students? Where did I get my hook from? Some of you will probably go, oh yeah, he just got his hook from that sentence. So those students that were in yesterday's class, you'll recognize where I got my hook from. I didn't, some of you are saying, wow, that, that's really good, that works. But we all thought about that yesterday. Anybody remember where that was from? Yeah, it's the critical thinking, Kyber, specifically what part of the critical thinking? So which part of it, the critical thinking? It wasn't the what question, Rajveer, but you're close, right? It was the why question. Remember when I asked you, why do we communicate? Yeah, very good, Bekchan. Why do we communicate? Kyber, very good. Yeah, why? Why do we communicate? To affect change, to create change within ourselves, within people around us, within the world. That's right, Pavan. Very good. It was the why question. So I just took the topic and the why question and use that for my hook. Communication is the method of affecting change in the world. Okay, and then I did my background where I defined the concept of the controlling idea. Okay, so uh, individuals can give and receive knowledge to and from their audience in a variety of ways, the most popular of which are verbal and written mediums. Okay. If something's not clear about my sentences, let me know. I can explain it in more detail. So then that's the definition, right, of the way of communicating and specifically the popular ways of communicating because arguably verbal and written communication are the most popular. Okay. And then, of course, the importance. So why are we talking about this? Well, partly because it's popular. And then also you see it here. It is valuable to assess the power of oral versus literary correspondence so that time and effort of communicators can be optimized. Okay, so I'm using some fairly fancy vocabulary here. I'm showing you what you can do at the band nine level. Uh, nevertheless, you can say this in simpler ways. So it is valuable to measure the power of spoken and written language so that effort of um, presenters can be maximum. Okay, so I just paraphrase that for you. Uh, Begjan, a medium is um, kind of the platform that you're using, okay? So your communication medium, it's like the method or the mode that you're using. That's what a medium is, all right? It's like a substrate, if you know that word. Uh, medium comes up quite a bit in um, academic uh, studies and engineering and so on, Bekjan, okay? All right. Uh, yeah, Mohit, you can get the hook from the what or the why of the topic in many cases. Okay. All right. Um, and then, of course, my thesis. So my thesis is, although spoken messages do have weight, I strongly disagree that it is always more powerful than the written word because literature is precise and persistent. So I 
fine-tuned when yesterday I typed this up after the class. Of course, I'm able to focus on just what I'm writing and not distracted by teaching as well, so I can get it even a little bit more fancy and even uh, play with some sound alliterations. It means matching sounds of words. So at the highest level of writing students, you can even think about how your language sounds when it's read by your reader. And I know that's beyond the IELTS level, but again, I'm always pushing you to think big. Okay, think big because you're all brilliant and awesome people and beautiful people. Okay, so uh, this is what the uh, this is what the introduction looks like, and I kept it quite short for you in this case. Uh, from the top, with hook, background, and thesis, just read it with me. Communication is the method of affecting change in the world. Individuals can give and receive knowledge to and from their audience in a variety of ways the most popular of which are verbal and written mediums. It is valuable to assess the power of oral versus literary correspondence so that time and effort of communicators can be optimized. Although spoken messages do have weight, I strongly disagree that it is always more powerful than the written word because literature is precise and persistent. Okay, so that's your introduction. Now, what am I going to do for body one here? So I've got my paragraphs kind of lined up here. So body one, what am I going to express? What am I going to express here with body one? Yeah, so um, about the advantage or about the power of being precise, right? Back John, to be more precise. To be more precise about the power of being precise. Yeah, okay. All right, so um, the power of being precise. Now, um, here... You can include into each body paragraph because this question, again, it's to what extent or to what degree, right? And now you're saying, well, not very much, basically. I don't agree with this idea very much. You can start with the spoken word in the topic sentence and then immediately transfer, transfer into the written word, okay? So... Uh, you can start with even though spoken uh, information can, uh, written, let's keep it at three dots there, um, written words are, okay, so what I want you to do, and I'm uh, going to keep it this way for you right now, is uh, complete this topic sentence, okay? So use uh, my uh, leading uh, words here or phrases and complete these for me, please, okay? So basically, I'm asking you to do a fill in the blank. Of course, focusing on the right uh, topic of point one, point one meaning being precise, okay? So can everybody complete my sentence? So your sentence should start with the same... Uh, five words, and then contain these three words as well, okay? So please write the topic sentence for me, and it should in some way contain this idea. Now, you can put this idea in there any way that you want, okay? So come up with that for me, okay? So we'll do a little bit of fill in the blank. So I'm leaving less to your imagination and a little bit more control from me on this one. Okay, and then I'll do the same. While you do that, I'll just line up the next components of the body paragraph.
Okay. So Mohit says, even though spoken information can influence society, written words are more effective in a formal way to deliver a message. Okay, Mohit, I can go with that. I think you, that works. If you can explain what you mean by formal, um, relating, of course, to precise in your explanation, I think that could work. Definitely. Okay. Abhishek says, even though spoken information can be impactful in life, written words are more powerful. Abhishek, that's just a little bit repetitious. Um, you're not including precise. Okay. Precise. Uh, something about precise and maybe even precise being powerful. So try it one more time, Abhishek. Okay. One more time. Uh, Hassan says, even though spoken um, words can powerfully impact their listeners and captivate audience, written words are more precise and persistent. No, Hassan, this one, this paragraph is just about precise. The next paragraph is going to be about persistent. Okay. So just precise, Hassan, just precise. All right. And uh, maybe a little bit more about precise carrying power in some way. Okay. All right, Rajvir says, even though spoken information can exchange ideas in real time with details, written words are more clear and direct to enhance the quality of communication. Rajvir, that is a beautiful uh, topic sentence. I like how you took some of the uh, ideas from the planning, added that to um, the uh, spoken information, and then uh, switched over to say that the quality um, is important in communication and that's given by being precise. It's clarity and direct. Yeah. Okay. Rajvir, that's nice. That works. That's a good one. All right. That will work. That is in the high band range. Absolutely. It's a clear, precise thought. Elena says, even though spoken information is time saving, and energetic in some situations, written words are more trustworthy and defined in a precise way, are more um, effective because they are defined uh, precisely. Yeah, Elena, I think you're definitely on the right track, okay? Absolutely. You're doing similar to Rajvir. You're in combining some of those elements, and it's, it's wonderful. It's nice writing, okay? Hina says, even though spoken information can have great influence, uh, written words are more valuable. Okay. Um, why though, Hina? So again, remember students, your body paragraphs need to be more precise than your introduction. You need to have more depth of information. Okay. All right. Beck John says, even though spoken information can be fast, the written medium can, can contain more accurate information, okay? Um, yeah, absolutely. So let me kind of take what some of you have written and uh, put it into effect here. Um, so nice. I think a lot of you have the right idea here, okay? Uh, I'll read a couple more in a minute. Um, while I do that, just to keep the class moving and rolling nicely forward, uh, please start writing your explanation. So for the explanation, you can be a bit more creative. Uh, what I want you to do in the explanation is really uh, focus on some quantitative or visual information and explain the concept of being more precise. So why are we more precise? Why is that more powerful? Those are the questions you want to answer for your reader here. Again, that dialogue with the reader, right? So the reader's going, okay, so precision is power, but what do you mean by that? So why are written words more powerful than spoken words? And then you have to answer that. And then they might say, okay, maybe another question there. So think about that. Start writing your explanations. Meanwhile, I'll put up the sentence for this and I'll read a couple more topic sentences from you. So even though spoken information can convey ideas very quickly with affect, okay, affect means emotions here, written words are 
in most cases much more detailed. and can have even greater influence on the audience, okay? So just like that, okay? Not, you don't have to necessarily overthink it. So this is mine uh, here. Let's uh, take out those extra T's. Um, even though spoken information can convey ideas very quickly with affect, Written words are, in most cases, much more detailed and can have even greater influence on the audience. Okay, so more detail, more influence on the audience. Why? What do you mean? Okay. All right, so now you're going into that explanation. Okay, uh, let me see here. I'm going to jump back and read Michael Fan's topic sentence because I know everybody's working hard and I want to catch as many of you as possible. So uh, Michael Fan says, even though spoken information can express thoughts of speakers, uh, written words are more precise to convey ideas of the writers, uh, making communication more impactful in some ways. Okay, so finish that idea. Add the word power in there, students. Remember, always more powerful is the part of the question. Okay. All right. Um, Nazir says, even though spoken information can be effective and getting feedback immediately, written words are precise and give more time to someone for feedback. Mm, okay, Nazir, careful. It's uh, I, I'm kind of following you, but you have to put yourself in my shoes. Uh, it's not a hundred percent clear where you're going with that. Okay, Kartik. Even though spoken information can be more effective in real time, written words are more controlled and convey ideas precisely. K Kartik, that's very good. Okay, and convey ideas precisely, not conveyed precisely. Uh, and convey ideas precisely. The words are active here. The words are active agents. Okay. All right. Um, Bekja, not background, but explanation. Okay, not background, but explanation. All right. Um, when uh, composing, okay. Um, when doing written composition, Bekja, too complex. When composing literature, much simpler, okay? So simple is beautiful, students. I know it's not always easy, but simple is beautiful. So Begjan, when composing literature, people have not minutes, but hours to think thoroughly and incorporate an abundance of ideas, right? So quantitative language, Begjan, you could have got the quantitative language in there instead of saying more time, define more time by hours or even days instead of seconds, right? Because when I'm speaking, as I'm doing in these classes, I only have seconds to think about, sometimes even uh, a hundredth of a second to think about what I'm going to say next, okay? But when I'm writing, uh, I have minutes and hours to do it. And that's a big, big difference, okay? So that's how you can incorporate that in there, right? Again, your audience is an alien. They don't know what you know. You have to express it to them even if they do know it, okay? Okay, so Kartik says, written mode of communication is precise because it is well planned. Sentences are constructed and built through grammatical structure and can reach 20 to 30 words, including lots of detail. Okay, Kartik, quantitative language. Hassan. Written words are more powerful owing to the fact that they are taking an extra three seconds to process in the writer's brain in comparison with oral communication, which is nearly instantaneous. Very good, Hassan. Nice use of quantitative language. Now you're making me, your audience, go, oh, yeah, wait a second. Yeah, that's right. 
okay, when I'm writing, I'm actually slowing down my thoughts. I'm not just blah, 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 whatever comes out my mouth, right? Okay, very good. Very good, Hassan. That's my favorite one so far. Um, uh, so uh, Nazir is asking, where did I use uh, precise in my topic sentence? Um, here, Nazir, detailed. Okay, detailed and precise are synonymous in this case. They're synonyms. Okay. All right. Good job. I'm going to keep moving here, students, because I want to get to the rest of it as well. So unfortunately, I won't have time to review everybody's every component, but I promise to you that I will try to switch it up with different students for different ones. So I'm going to uh, fill in the um, explanation and the quantitative information here. And then uh, what I want you to do is start thinking about the example. And when you think about the example, so take your time, be precise, compose it carefully, okay? Um, when you're thinking about the example, uh, make sure that you keep it in third person voice. So you probably uh, realized, uh, are we using third person here? Oh, you can make it, sorry, um, here. I'm using first person in my thesis, so I'm going to correct myself there. I strongly uh, disagree. So I am using first person, so it's okay to use first person if you really want to. Okay. Um, third or first, I'll take both in this case. Uh, first person voice. Um, so the example can be third or first person voice. Uh, it should be an example that we can relate to, that we can easily recognize. Okay, and try to think of an example that could possibly uh, work uh, in your next body paragraph as well. Now, your next body paragraph will be about persistent, right? Which means that the written word stays around for a long, long time. So you might want to think about some kind of an example that's detailed and it's been around for maybe 100 years or more and has had an impact on society. I know there are quite a few examples of literature that are very detailed and have been around for a long time. So hopefully you can think of at least one of those. And then I'm going to um, fill in the blank here for the explanation. Okay. So... All right. So that is my explanation. Uh, when authors compose their ideas through literature, they can spend minutes and even days thinking about the exact ways to describe and express their thoughts to their readers as where presenters have only seconds to come up with what they say. In this way, written text can be exceptionally convincing as opposed to auditory messages. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see what you've come up with for uh, the example. 
Okay, I can see some of you came up with a couple of quick ones, clever ones correctly. Okay, good. Um, all right. So Ferdov says, vital information is usually spread by written form as one or two additional or dismissed details can lead to catastrophic consequences. The Bible and Quran were written as it is essential not to miss or add details. Very good, Ferdovs. Yeah, I was wondering if some of you would quickly come up with uh, some of the most powerful books in human history. Uh, and of course, those, especially in the Western and South Asian world, include the Bible and the Quran, the holy books, right? Um, we say the messages as well, but definitely most of their detail and power comes from the book itself, right? Okay, very nice. Nicely done for Dobbs. Uh, Beck John says, for example, many novelists who have two to three years to complete a book can convey detailed and accurate information uh, compared to journalists who have only one or three seconds to do so. Yeah, very good. Okay, Beck John. Now, what would be a book? So there are some very famous historical books, Beck John, that you can think of uh, which, um, which uh, have this. Okay. And even if you don't want to go down the path of uh, historical books, political books, or religious books, there's even a, some fantasy books that are really famous. Okay. Uh, so um, I'm sure you've heard of some of them. Even if you think of some movies that were originally books, uh, you will come up with this. Okay. Hassan's using a first-person example. That's good. When I send a letter to managers, I have to create a draft. And then uh, this will not only create a good impression in the mind of the receiver, but also it is necessary to build a good piece of literature. Hassan, I think you have a good idea there to first draft a letter, then review, revise, add more detail. But I think it's a little bit unclear. So you have to clarify that, all right? Um, for instance, if there were no written documents, we would not only know about our ancestors and our culture in detail. On the other hand, every futuristic approach like scientific discoveries, promoting new products and implementing new legislation depends upon detailed and precise documentation. Uh, Elena, that's still an explanation. Okay, that's not an example. Students, be really careful um, with examples and explanations. Um, yeah, Sammy Rocky says, can we use scientific books like Newton? Um, yeah, you can. Uh, so Newton's law of gravity or, for example, uh, Darwin's uh, law of nature. Uh, those books are really famous scientific books as well. You can use those. Uh, I'm going to use a different one. Okay, so... For example, one of the most popular and uh, famous fantasy stories of our time is Lord of the Rings, um, written by uh, J. R. R. Tolkien um, over half century ago and the reason for its fame is the great level of detail contained in the books more than 1200 pages. Okay. Uh, any of you watch uh, the movies Lord of the Rings? Uh, anybody maybe read the books or including the books The Hobbit? Any of that come to mind for some of you? Or maybe if you're not a fan of Lord of the Rings, some of you might have um, seen um, uh, the Harry Potter series. Okay. 
Um, Harry Potter is uh, also um, written literature with lots of detail. Yeah, that's right, uh, Rajveer. Another one that comes to mind in the world of fantasy, if you want to stay away from history and you want to just keep it with pop culture, uh, would be uh, Game of Thrones, the very popular HBO series. Uh, probably those of you who saw that series know that that's actually a series of books as well with a lot of detail. Uh, Gineal, Sherlock Holmes is a very famous uh, series of novels, again, written quite a while ago. So um, there are lots of um, points there, right? Okay. Um, Hassan, worth showing our disagreement throughout. So even with my example, I'm showing the idea that written words are more powerful than spoken words because these books preceded the shows. They preceded the spoken word, right? So everybody is on par here, okay? All right, so uh, let's do uh, body paragraph two now. So I'm going to read um, body paragraph one. By the way, if you misspell the name of an author like J.R.R. Tolkien, I can't remember the spelling of his name, uh, you're not going to really lose marks for that, okay? So I got the I and the E reversed. They're not going to take marks for misspelling Tolkien, okay? They don't expect you to have perfect spelling for that, okay? All right, um, so... Uh, here I have my body paragraph one. I'm going to read that. Now, for body paragraph two, I want you to keep to the same kind of structure and flow. And uh, instead of focusing on precise, I want you to focus on persistent. Okay? I want you to focus on persistent. All right? Persistent. Yeah. Kartik Autobiographies of Pioneers would be a brilliant one as well. Okay, so start writing your uh, body paragraph two. Just get your topic sentence, explanation, example flowing. And I'll keep checking the chat, okay? Just a sec. I'll uh, get us back on uh, camera here. Um, so I'll keep checking the chat and uh, reflecting as much as possible while also uh, writing here. So, uh, writing here with you. So that we can uh, hopefully get to the conclusion in this class without rushing too much. Okay. So, just go ahead, focus on what you're doing, focus on your composition, and then we'll continue working and reflecting. Okay. All right. So I've given you a good head start here. Okay, so Abhishek says, for instance, I believe the holy book of Bhagwati Gita for Hindus. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good one as well, Abhishek. So um, Bhagwati Gita, lots of detail, right? And it's a very powerful book, obviously. Now, again, uh, if we go back to the question, many of you might realize that, hey, yeah, if I could have thought about these examples in the beginning when I read the question, like the Bible, the Koran, uh, like um, famous uh, historical books, biographies, fantasy books that we discussed, then you'd very quickly realize that, hey, wait a second, that's absolutely not true. That spoken word is always most pow more powerful than the written word as well, right? So remember that top, down, down, up. Okay, uh, now I can throw in a connecting sentence here if I want. So this is one argument against uh, the idea that uh, spoken words have more weight than written ones in all contexts okay so you can throw in a connecting concluding type of uh, sentence like that uh, it's even if you don't as long as you have a very clear essay like this you're still going to get a band eight eight five nine for sure okay
All right. Let's see what you have uh, so far. I'm just typing away here. You're probably reading with me as well. Uh, reading what I'm writing. Okay, Beckjun says, um, although oral communication is emotional, written medium can last up to thousands of years and available whenever individuals want it, need it, or find it. <laughs> right, Beckjun? Very nice topic sentence. Okay, I like it. Um, Hassan says, the quality of persistent uh, persistence correlated with written communication enables authors to store their ideas for thousands of years. Okay. Um, all right, Hassan, I like it. There's some grammatical language use mistakes. They're so careful. I corrected it a bit without that. It's quite confusing, but you have the right idea. So just be careful with your grammar and language. Elena says, although one of the main features of documentation is that it can be preserved for years and years, um, preservation of old documents helps us create uh, history. Elena, sorry, I, I didn't read the also correctly. Also, one of the main features of documentation. Yeah, okay, of written documentation, right? Ferdov says many popular important speeches have been uh, written for centuries uh, to be stable and save information for future generations. Yeah, Ferdov's very good. I like your creativity. So Ferdov's is saying, hey guys, even when somebody says uh, a very powerful speech, what do we do? We write it down. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. comes to mind here, for example, in American history, um, because that's the way that we preserve it and keep the power of that speech is through the written word. Otherwise, it's just lost. Okay, so very good. All right. Uh, this is what I wrote so far. In another sense, it is true that spoken information reveals much of the speaker's attitude, but it is also very fleeting. Uh, notice this word, students, fleeting. Fleeting means that it's here and then poof, it disappears. Uh, my favorite form of art is cooking uh, because it's beautiful, it's delicious, it incorporates the sense of smell, taste, sight, and it's fleeting. So it's very selfless. It just People you love eat it and then it disappears. So it's a beautiful form of art. I love it for that reason. It's a very selfless form of art. It's a fleeting form of art. Spoken messages are fleeting. They're said, they're heard, and then they disappear. Unless, as Ferdovs is saying, somebody writes them down for future generations, right? Okay. Uh, and then the contrast. Uh, your topic sentences... Students, they don't have to be one sentence. It can be two sentences as well, okay? So, however, words which are written, saved, and published can stand the test of time. This is another nice expression in English, stand the test of time, and influence audiences centuries or even millennia later. This gives authors power not just in their immediate time, but also well into the future. And this is an incredible level of power and influence. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so um, even though many verbal or oral stories have been told since Tolkien wrote Lord of the Rings. Those which were undocumented in literature have been forgotten, but Tolkien's masterpiece is echoed throughout the decades and likely centuries to come. Okay. All right. So a little bit of composition there. 
All right. Um, so here again, I'm tying in, I'm connecting um, the uh, previous uh, the previous uh, example. Okay. Now, uh, students, uh, notice that I'm using third person voice here, and um, for this question, third person is better. So if I'm really careful and I'm revising and reviewing uh, my um, my work, then um, I would probably change my thesis statement to third person here as well. So all those spoken messages do have weight. Um, it is strongly disagreeable that they are always more powerful than the written word. So I'm gonna change it so that it's all third person voice because it doesn't actually ask directly for my opinion, okay? All right, um, students, so even though we've been making some good ground, uh, I don't wanna rush through the conclusion. So uh, I'm going to leave the conclusion for you and I will post the conclusion on our YouTube community board. I know I still need to post that task one essay from last week as well. So I'll make sure to do that. So check there. Also, I've been doing a lot of posts for task one and task two on um, the uh, blogs for the websites. Okay. So uh, definitely go to uh, ahelp.com and then find the blog on the website. Same with gltshelp.com. And uh, you'll find some task one, task two, examples there that I've been kind of refining and giving some band nine examples there. So uh, check that out. I think a lot of you are doing a wonderful job. So keep it up. Keep following this strategy, this pattern. And I promise you that you'll get a great score. We've had lots of students who sat the IELTS. They have pretty good English. They get a band six, 6.5 uh, in their writing. Then they change to this structure and this strategy and they jump up to a band eight, 8.5. So uh, as we say in English, the proof is in the pudding. And uh, we have some testimonials uh, from those students as well. So, um, so definitely practice. Keep at it. Okay. Good job, everyone. Uh, all of our viewers, check out our websites. Join our premium packages. See you in 30 minutes for task one line graph. You're very welcome, Hassan, Elena, Bekjan, Mohit, Abhishek, Kyber, Rajveer. Maksud, see you soon. Bye for now.